In this video, I want to talk a bit about Soteri Lihi at Tesco. Now, this is important currently because, as you might have seen on ITV News, Channel 4 News, or read in The Economist like me, he's been in the news lately because he has been, he is the chief exec of Tesco and is retiring at the age of 55. And he has been in Tesco for over 14 years and may, has made a large difference, not just to Tesco, but the whole world. Um, he plans to do more private investment and keep his large shares in Tesco after retirement. However, being such a well-trusted businessman and doing such a great job, um, when he announced on June the 8th that he will be retiring, Tesco shares plummeted because people trust him. As later on in the video we'll see, um, he did this project which led to some losses of Tesco, but this didn't affect the company too much because people had faith in the man. So, you know, it, he wasn't too much of a problem, but now that he's retiring, you know, it's causing a bit of upheaval and the shares have gone down. Now, he was one out of four brothers from Liverpool, and he was one of them who did not drop at the age of 16. He carried on his studies, I think, in management sciences, he came to London for work because he didn't feel Liverpool had enough work and he started off shelving and sweeping floors in Tesco. And what is interesting, I think this is really important for young people like myself, is that when he came to London he applied to be a project manager, uh, no, product manager at Turkey Foil. He got rejected. He also applied for a job at Tesco but was turned uh, turned down because another candidate took that place. When that candidate was promoted, he finally got put into Tesco as a marketing um, executive. Now, all of this shows that the guy has failed a couple of times and now has finally been able to do something. So from shelving and sweeping floors in Tesco, he's somebody who earns a salary of 1.3 million. So I think he's a really good symbol of hope and, you know, something that young people should be working towards. I think he's an amazing guy. Now, he has had international success with Tesco. He's opened like 4,300 stores worldwide or more than that. For those of you who don't know Tesco, it's like a middle income range store. So it's supposed to be aimed at the people who feel that Asda is maybe too cheap for them and Sainsbury's is maybe more posh and too expensive for them. So it provides a shop which is in the middle for middle income range. He has made Tesco become the third most successful supermarket after um, Walmart, which runs Asda, and France's Carry4. From my experience from going to Carry4, that's more of a hypermarket, and it's a completely different setup to Tesco. So I don't. I think it's like comparing apples and pears. It's not the same thing. Now, what he has done, he's created stores all over the world, and he's done this in an interesting way. For example, his stores in Thailand, he did something called glocalization, where he uses um, the same lo uh, global brand and procedure and everything but he applies it to locations locally um, so for example in Thailand he has something called wet markets where fruit and veg is left out just like the Thai people like to shop and I think in uh, China they've opened hypermarkets in India they're doing a partnership with Tata to open stores he's um, created new stores in Eastern Euro Europe as well so you know he's taken Tesco from something which is maybe just for the UK to an international level and it has become so successful. His latest project, which was what The Economist was talking about that he left unfinished, was his business in the States. Now he planned to open a thousand stores there because of the recession, only 145 were open and they were along the west coast in places like Arizona. Now, um, as starting out, what it was, it wasn't called Tesco, it was called Fresh and Easy. So just like Walmart has Asda, Tesco has Fresh and Easy. And what they did is they opened these stores and they tried to create, again, a middle range uh, income store. And they planned this because what he did is he sent people to live with American families for two weeks. And he realized there was a gap in the market and he decided to latch onto that gap. Now, what's happened is, is that to promote, to get people to spend, particularly in the recession, they had to use a lot of promotion as part of their marketing, you know, the marketing mix. So out of that, Tesco made a loss of 165 million, even though they, you know, the profits have gone up by 10% in the last year. They made this loss. This did not cause much problem because people had faith in him. That's why he's so important. That's why his leaving has caused shares to drop down. 
so um that this fresh and easy store was open and at the beginning it's been making loss in my opinion this is natural when a business starts up it makes losses and then it gets better it's the same way when we talk about economics of privatization of firms like british telecom in the beginning they make losses so i think it's all part of it but because he hasn't he's not staying on in tesco and continuing until it makes profits it, the the economist was saying it's kind of like leaving unfinished business now the idea behind this whole fresh and easy store was to um, increase the market share, so take over more global range, challenge Walmart a bit more, and add these new stores. They would be different for America because not just would they be like uh, for the middle income market, which he said there was a gap in. They would include British style ready meals, and they would add a bit of other culture to it, making it more diverse and making it more enjoyable for people to stay in. So now we'll see when um, the next chief exec how well he does. But I think it's important to know somebody like Sir Terry Leach Leahy. Thank you.